how's it going? Good to see y'all here. Like a bunch of people already. As you can tell, we got a bit of a new look going right now. We've got some new, uh, some new software. So over in here, we're using a, e, where it is? There it is, Ecamm Live. Um, we're trying this out. So we'll see, uh, hopefully uh, next week or so, we'll say, you know what? Not a trial deal anymore. We're doing this full time. And then we'll get rid of that little logo there. But um, yeah, so we got, a, we got a new microphone in here. Hopefully you guys can hear. This is a nice, clear sound of me talking. And then another big change is that the, the instrument you're hearing, you're actually getting a blend of what you're hearing from this mic and what's coming direct out of the amplifier. So we will be able to do some direct sampling for you guys of exactly what the instrument sounds like direct from the amp to your little ear holes right there. How do you like that? It'd be cool. I'm looking forward to doing some more trials like that. This week, let's see, we are doing the Geva Novita 3.0 electric violin. It's the first time we're really, really talking to you guys about this. Uh, I tried this thing out at NAM 2019, not 2020, 2019, back when the world was still normal. And, uh, you know, people could hug each other and it was, it was good. Um, the, the instrument sounded amazing and we really liked it. And the only thing was that it didn't, it had a, like a proprietary shoulder rest thing that was didn't dig it. Um, but they fixed that. So they've got this little thing right here, like this little spider web looking thing. You can put your shoulder rest on the instrument now, whatever shoulder rest you want. Cause I know, I know we're weird, right? We all were like, we want our shoulder rest on the instrument. I am, I'm funny like that. I want my shoulder rest on the instrument. So um, you can now do that with the Novita. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna play it for you a little bit. There's a four and a five. Um, this is the five, because that's the one I'm going to pick up every time. this violin sounds it sounds good that was one of the first things that uh, dragged me to this once you see this you see this violin right here see how cool it's a uh, sort of a different shape to it uh, not really shaped like anything else we have honestly and that's cool I'm sort of getting used to the fact that I'm not seeing myself like in a mirror I'm seeing myself the same way you're seeing me it's really disorienting it's gonna take a minute I feel like a weather girl trying to point out like over here we have clouds or something i don't know whatever so here's the violin the scroll's dope i like that that's pretty cool which way am i going there we go <sighs> it's gonna be a minute y'all hang in there with me um the uh the game of people are supposed to be here at some point and we will see them here to answer questions right now we're just going to see this it's going around the screen like remember the old screensaver on the dvd players so like your screen wouldn't get burned in never mind that all right, um, let's do this. Let's look at it. Oh, I wanted to show you guys what our room looks like now. This is what I'm looking at. You guys are seeing what I'm looking at. You can see the computer in the middle that I'm looking at and the little microphone and the lights on the side. That's what, uh, that's what I'm looking at, by the way, just so you know. How cool is that? I just shared my screen with you. I like this new software. This is fun. Um, so yeah, let's talk about some of the features on this, right? Um, they come in brown and black. You see the brown one hanging on the wall here. Um, they have Whitner pegs, which I love these Whitner pegs. These things are so dope. What's up, Allegra? Allegra is here from Geva. 
So if you guys have questions, you can dump them in the comments section. And Allegra, she knows everything about everything. She can answer your questions. I do play right-handed. Isn't that crazy? I've been playing right-handed my whole life, but I was getting all these crazy messages from people like, oh, you're left-handed. You have left-handed violins. That's awesome. No, no. It's, it was a thing that Facebook did. And uh, anyway, I could have flipped it around, um, but it was making me really nauseous. And like, I'm just, I'm just doing it. So you guys are going to see the right-handed mat. Anyway. Um, you can see it comes in brown and black. It, I think it comes in red too. We just have the brown and black here right now. Um, Winter Pegs um, has a, it has a headphone amp back here. So like you see where you plug it in, there's a headphone amp here. There's volume and treble and bass. And where the treble and bass are like in a frequency range, they, they make sense. Not every, not every fiddle you'll try, like where the bass and treble are necessarily makes sense but these um these ones do and um we'll, when i switch over to direct mode you'll be able to hear just the violin and um and then uh, I'll, I'll sort of monkey with that stuff then um i will say that when i first saw this the first thing that jumped out at me was this this looks like a um this looks like sort of one of those cheap chinese preamp things that you see on the little 50 dollars violins it's not that at all it's not that at all. I, from a distance, it kind of looks like that, but it's not. It's like, it's an actual real preamp, um, not Chinese. It sounds good. It won't catch on fire. It sounds good. Um, so yeah, uh, the, the features again, winter pegs, headphone amp, treble and bass. It's got a volume on there. Um, nine volt battery. And look at the pricing on this. 891 for the four string and 1080, like right, right at a thousand bucks for the five string. That's crazy talk. There's, there's nothing, you know, back the old Yamaha SV-130 that used to be on the market that for some reason they took off the market, um, had a headphone amp on it. There's nothing else in that $1,000 price range. Um, of course, the SV-130 is discontinued. So there's nothing in this price range on the market, um, reputable instruments with a headphone amp built in. Um, and if you're doing, oh, that's not true. The Yamaha... Um, YSV 104 still does, but that is a practice only instrument. It's not designed for playing out. So this one has a quarter inch out, so you can plug it in just like, you know, just like you're going to go play somewhere, plug in the quarter inch, or you can go to the headphones. Now you do switch back and forth. There's a little switch to go back and forth between the two. Um, but that's what's going on there. Tell you what, I am going to switch over to, um, you guys can hear the instrument in a room. You're hearing a little bit of the mic and a little bit of the direct sound. So I'm going to switch over now and you guys are only going to be able to hear what is coming out of the amp. And I'm using a loud box artist, a Fisherman loud box artist amp. And you will see on the screen what the, um, what the settings are on that amp. And, um, I'm going to turn my microphone. Let's see, go over to this and I'm going to turn the microphone down. You hear me going away? I'm going away. I'm coming back. All right. How about that? So we're going to change back here. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. So there we are. That's what the instrument sounds like when it's just plugged in by itself. 
and the direct sound hope you guys uh, could hear all that just let me know in the comments or something if you could hear just the instrument by itself no mic um, and uh, yeah so yeah Deanne says I bought headphones that can be used with an Ovita and an iPad at the same time good call yeah very nice um, Uh, yeah, so there's the link in the comments section. If you see, if you look in the comments section, you can see that we just posted um, a link to the instrument where you can buy it at our website now. Hua! Um, what's up, everybody? Um, let's play a little more. A little more. <laughs> So, um, I really like this instrument. It sounds great. Again, this is the five. Let me grab the four so you guys can see that. Um, this is the brown four. Um, get some light on this thing. Here's the brown four, which I got to go the other way. Sorry. This uh, reverse screen is sort of messing me up. This is the thing where you guys can attach your own shoulder rest. Look at that. Look at there, huh? Huh? So that's what's going on with that. Um, the next feel really fabulous. Obviously, Gabe has been making violins for a long time. Maybe Allegra can uh, can chime in here and give a little bit of history of uh, Gabe of violins and how long you guys have been making instruments. But it's this is not their first rodeo. This is the first Gabe instrument we really carried because most of our instruments are acoustics. And in our world, if we can't plug it in, we don't care about it. Um, so, yeah, this is the instrument. They have been making violins for a long time. Um, does it include a case? Excellent question. <laughs> Chris, do these come with a case? Susie? Everybody's in the back packing up violins to get to you guys. Um, it's an excellent question. Uh, what's that? Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, what maybe what type of cords, cables? I don't know. Gabe has been making, uh, been making for yeah, nearly a hundred years. They've been making violins. Some of their first violins you can probably buy right now still. Um, Chris, are you out there now? No, it's all good. We'll get that question about the case. We'll get that question. Um, what type of cord? Uh, like cable? I'm just using a regular guitar cable. Um, in a studio, you may be able to tell in a studio setting the difference between an inexpensive cable and an expensive cable. And I don't mean like inexpensive like $2. I mean like inexpensive like $25 versus $125. In a studio, yeah, you can hear the difference between those two cables. Live? No. Um, 
I mean, maybe you can kind of tell a teeny tiny bit of difference, but nobody in your crowd can for sure. Um, yeah, it's a, I wouldn't go with a long cable. You kind of want to go with the shortest cable you can get away with and still be able to do what you need to do. I don't want to use anything more than 15 feet for sure in a live setting because the capacitance on those things gets kind of high. Um, but yeah, any, you know, as, as long as you're using a reasonable cable and a, like, you know, 15, 20, $25 cable in a live setting, yeah, you should be fine. What's my preference on cables? Uh, my preference is to not have cables. I hate cables. Um, my preference is wireless. Oh, strings. Ah, excellent. There we go. There's the answer we're going to. Um, I don't know. I think these are dominants. I'm not a string expert. I think these are dominant strings. Maybe Legger can tell me for sure. Um, this, uh, I think these are dominants, although I could be wrong, but Allegra's here. She will know. Um, I personally am a Larson artist, so I use Larson strings, but um, I know that uh, Daddario helicores are super popular. I know Yamaha uses Zyx strings. Those are super popular. Um, uh, for studio, yeah, Debbie, are you asking about, um, Debbie's asking for studio like cables? Uh, yeah, I haven't done the thing where I've invested a ton of money in studio cables yet. Um, honestly, I do enough processing on my violin that it probably doesn't matter that that much which cable I'm using. Um, you know, if I was running direct and you were basically getting just a super dry sound, um, I'd probably go with some, some of the $100 area cables. Um, do we sell Larson strings? Um, I think so. I don't know. I don't pay that much attention to the strings here. We, we really don't deal a whole lot in strings. We sort of, we sell strings as a convenience to our customers. Like when you're ordering an instrument and you want to, you want to get some extra strings with it. Yeah, that's cool. As far as like wanting to be a string dealer, we don't, we're not really super interested in that. I mean, we, we carry all the weirdo strings, like, you know, like the weird kid strings, like the, the violin F and like a viola E. And, you know, we carry like some of the weird strings. But as far as like, if we're, we're definitely not a, uh, we're definitely not where you want to go just to buy strings. Is business doing okay right now? Well, we're making it for now. Um, I'll say that the, the, this, uh, lockdown thing is not doing us any favors. Um, people are still ordering electric violins. I know people sort of feel like they're going to be stuck in their houses for a while. And you know what? Um, if I'm going to be stuck in my house for a while, I'm going to get to practice a lot. And if, uh, and if I'd like to stay alive in my house, then I can, uh, I can have an instrument that's going to be a little quieter. Ava Parasi just came out with a fifth string that worked great on the Novita as well. Thank you for that information. Um, it's always nice to know who's making C strings. And um, is it possible to raise the volume of my voice? Yes, it is. Excellent question, Akiva. Thank you for asking. Hopefully that's louder now. Is that better? Um, yeah, I think I had turned it down a little bit when I turned down the, when I, when I did the violin only thing. But hopefully that's better. Um, maybe a little more. Okay. Um, yeah. So if you are playing a five string violin, don't buy a, don't buy a viola C and put on your violin. It's not going to intonate right. They actually make violin C strings. It's the weird, I know, you know, the two set people are going to freak out. Um, but it's, uh, five string violins are a thing. We probably sell more fives than fours. Um, because it's uh it's just a thing if you're if you're gonna the reason that a five string violin excuse me wasn't that big a thing in the past is because it's hard to get the body to recreate that low c and then have the brilliance of the e but if you're dependent mostly on a pickup then the pickup doesn't care how many strings are on the violin um it can reproduce all those frequencies so um yeah the five string is really a much better range for instruments than a four string is. Um, you get that low C, man. It makes such a big difference when you're an improviser, being able to work 
Um, and then, of course, guys like me and Akiva, six and seven string guys, uh, you know, we like to get low. Um, yeah, but I think five string as far as like adaptability coming from a four, if you've learned how to play on a four, going to a five isn't that big a deal. Going to a six is a little bit bigger deal. Um, but going to a five is a pretty simple thing to do. And uh, man, it just it just feels good under the hand and it extends your range uh, a lot. That extra fifth on the bottom is, is worth a whole lot um, in terms of being able to improvise. And then if you're still a classical only player, you can um, you can uh, you can cover viola parts and you you know you can also vibrato on what would have been an open G right you know if I come down to I'm just left with open G right but why not oh ho, ho, that's more better right. Uh, use a short scale low C string on a Yamaha. Well, yeah, a short scale viola string is a cent So a violin is basically a 14 inch viola. Okay. So if you're doing 14 inch viola stuff, I mean, you can do that. Uh, but they make, they actually make violin C's and, uh, they're designed to work with the other violin strings too. So tonally they'll, uh, they'll be in the same family and all that too. So it should work. A violin C, in theory, should work uh, significantly better than a, than a short scale viola. Um, so I'm going to go back and play just a little more where uh, I'm going to turn this microphone down. I promise to turn it back up again, right? But we're going to go to um, this scene for you guys. Boom. You can see that. I should be going away now. I'm going away. I'm back and I turned that back up so you guys should be able to hear me. Okay. Um, hope that volume is good for everybody. I'm still, I'm still learning. I'm trying to get all this stuff figured out. So that is what's going on with the new Gava Novita 3.0 violin. We, we really, really like this instrument. So um, it's another addition to that thousand dollar and under category. Um, with all this stuff going on in the world right now, uh, it looks like I'm going to have more time to do video content, which is uh, great. Uh, I guess the world is what the world is, right? So um, I'm going to have more time to do video content. And now that we got this uh, new streaming thing, um, I think we're going to have some fun. So we're probably going to redo some of our price category uh, videos and this is going to be one that we're going to put in that under a thousand price category. So in that category now is the Gava Novita, the Yamaha YEV, the NS Design Wave, and the, I keep pointing to where the instruments are. You can't see them, but I can. So the, the YEV, the Wave, the, uh, the Wood Stingray SVX, and the Gava. We now carry four instruments in that under a thousand dollar category and whoa, they are good ones. So yeah, that's uh that's going to be pretty much it for our live stream today. I hope you guys uh, found this entertaining and informative. Uh, and that's, uh, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out. The new Gava Novita 3.0, super sweet instrument. Love the way it feels, love the way it sounds. Am way crazy about the price on that. Ooh, it's good. All right, so the plan is, unless the cops come to my house and lock me inside, 
Um, the plan is to be back here again next Wednesday, and we'll cover another topic. We're going to have some more fun for you guys, okay? Um, see you soon. Everybody stay safe. Stay in your house the best you can. Don't go get the Rona. Stay home. Practice. Hey, I'll buy an electric violin. Buy this electric violin. You can have this one. We'll send it to Allegra. She'll sign it. You can have it in your house. It'll be a small fee for that. I think her signature is worth a couple thousand bucks. Um, but yeah, so fantastic violin. Please buy this violin. It's fantastic. I love it. You're going to love it. We'll see you guys next week.